There are many places on the mainland that I think are geothermal, but it's much more complex. Ours is so simple because we have that water. On the mainland, they got to pump water down there to get steam. So the cost goes up. Ours, we don't have to do anything. Where do you see us going with geothermal? Do you see this happening? Yeah, I do. You know, as a matter of fact, the Department of Hawaiian Home Lands are taking this very seriously. They're having a big discussion about this right now. And they're looking at all the various different subjects we we're talking about. How does this help the beneficiaries? How can we use it? Um, what, what does it take? How much do we need to invest? In the Philippines, what they did was they made a deal where the developer would sign into a 10-year contract. They would do the developing. And then at the end of 10 years, the state would buy it back. But when they bought it back, they expected all of their workers from the top management to the janitor to be uh, local citizens. And when we went there, every single person in the plant was uh, Filipino. We saw it in action. You know, so it was a bill buyback, yeah? So you perform, you get it done, and we'll pay you for it after it's done. So it's kind of a safe deal, seems like to me. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Welcome to What Would Our Kupuna Do? A channel with Richard Ha that looks at what we can do today to make Hawaii Island a more sustainable place to live so that our grandchildren and their grandchildren will be able to stay in Hawaii and live good lives here. Today, we're going to talk about using geothermal energy for electricity. First, Richard, Richard, let's talk about the big picture. Why are we discussing geothermal energy? Tell us about how that whole topic first came onto your radar. When I first went to the mainland to study what was causing the cost of uh, growing bananas to go up, I went to the first of five association for the study of peak oil conferences. And that's where I learned that it took energy to get anything done. It seems like common sense, but it takes energy to do work. Without energy, it, it's a real problem. So looking back from that time, I realized, wait a minute, we've got five volcanoes volcanoes on this island and we can do geothermal. And then subsequently, I also went to the Philippines to look at uh, a geothermal operation there. And the geothermal operation there, the volcano had erupted last time, 100,000 years ago. Whereas our five volcanoes here, two of them just erupted just within the last five years. And Mauna Kea uh, didn't erupt for 4,000 years that's a safer place to be. So from a risk reward point of view, if you take a look at Mauna Kea and imagine there's, there's still heat under there, there's a lot of heat that can be used and it's relatively safe. So of course there's Hualalai and Kohala possibilities as well. I like the idea about utilizing the geothermal under Mauna Kea because it's on Hawaiian home land. And if you do it right, the Hawaiian home beneficiary can get value out, out of that. And that is because the Hawaiians own the resource. So they don't have to pay royalties. Royalties that save can be used to lower their cost of electricity. And if you set it up so that it's done for the long term, then they can have more trust in the DHHL or the organizational structure that makes that work. So there's a lot of pluses to doing geothermal on Hawaii Island and especially on Mauna Kea. I understand there used to be a lot of pushback about developing geothermal on this island, but it has really changed. Yeah, you, and you're right. It has changed quite a bit. You know, as the youngsters got more educated and they looked at the reasons why this is happening and how this might affect future generations and the fact that they made their points. Don't ignore the Hawaiians is what they were saying. At that point, it was probably valid. Now people are actually on the same side. So there are more and more people coming together and saying, you know what, we can make science and culture work together. Why not? And so I've noticed that change myself really clearly. Yeah. Do we know that there is geothermal energy um, under DHHL lands? Pretty sure, because on the west side of Mauna Kea, they did some test drilling over there and they hit hot water. So they know that you go further than that, you would get geothermal heat. And that's the same thing that they expect on the east side of the, the mountain. Actually, the whole whole mountain, all around the mountain, is probably various heat sources. Oh, interesting. What are the considerations about where to locate other geothermal sites? You've mentioned Mauna Kea. Is that the only spot? Are there other places that are being looked at? You could locate it at Kilauea, but then, you know, the, we, we saw what happened there where the it erupted and just covered up a lot of, a lot of places, so that's uh, risky. Mauna Loa too, because not too long ago, Mauna Loa erupted and it started coming down toward the saddle. People were looking at that, holy smokes, you can come across the saddle, end up in Hilo. Lucky thing, it stopped. Mauna Kea is a possibility. We talked about that. Kuala Lai is also a possibility. And so is uh, the Kohala mountainside. What's holding things back is the fact that we haven't done any exploration to speak of, meaning drilling slim wells to understanding what the resource looks like. Tell us about the Hawaii Groundwater and Geothermal Resources Center at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, HGGRC is a relatively new organization. They were formed 
2016, I believe, something like that. It was co-founded by Don Thomas and uh, Nicole, Dr. Nicole Lautzi. Dr. Lautzi is now the director. Most of the work that had been done was done with students and staff, people under HGGRC. And, you know, 16 years ago or what, however long that was ago, is, isn't that long. You know, it's relatively new. But if you ask anybody off the street, what is HGGRC? A lot of people don't even know. That's the most important organization on the UH campus as far as I can see, because that's where we can get our energy from. Other than that, we don't have any oil and gas and other things like that. Uh, we have solar, but, you know, that uh, depends on batteries, et cetera, et cetera. But geothermal is a free one. We're lucky to be among the 1% of the world that has this resource. So we really need to elevate the organization. And they're under the Hawaii HIGP. HIGP, if it was set on the side with Hawaii groundwater resource attached to it, then you you could focus specifically on geothermal and water. And there are some other things beside that, but primarily, because right now it's sitting under this organization of four, it starts with Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and another one, SOEST, HIGP, and then way on the bottom, nobody knows who they are, HGGRC. So if somehow we could figure out to elevate there so that people can understand what they do and what they re represent. You know, for example, HGGRC, they need uh, water to do the test hole drilling. But then at the same time, if you need the water to do the drilling, it could possibly be, especially on Hawaiian homes land, that you can get water for the community as well as the energy resource. So it's tremendous important. And what benefits the Hawaiian Homes community actually benefits the rest of us. Because, you know, for example, if you were doing uh, geothermal and you were exporting stuff, because now all of a sudden you got all this energy, you could make steel, you could make all kinds of stuff, depending on what is economically feasible. Now, now you've put yourself in a position to be safer in the future as compared to not doing anything, in which case, you know, we'd be like waiting for something to happen on the mainland and we copy the mainland, but we're not the mainland. Right. I know you also went to Iceland and uh, did a little uh, learning about geothermal there. Tell us something about that. Yeah, Iceland is, is really interesting. You know, uh, first of all, there are islanders as well, you know, because they, they live in this cold place and they cannot make any mistakes. They have to utilize the resources that they have as best they can. We went to go see uh, the Blue Lagoon. When you're looking across the Blue Lagoon, there's a geothermal well system straight in the front. And, and let's uh, describe what the Blue Lagoon is. I've been there too. It's kind of neat. It's a huge kind of a spa area. It's adjacent to this geothermal production yeah. area and the, the hot water that is being used as this very expensive spa area comes directly from that process. I thought there was a very clever way of utilizing that resource and uh, that helps the economy. Iceland, it has some some of the most educated people in the whole world, you know, and something like 80% or 90% of the people vote, you know, so they're participating and they're very smart and, uh, and they're island people like we are. So when I was up there, I know I was thinking to myself, geez, well, I was in my 30s, I, I, I think I'd stay up here. And, and the reason I was thinking that was at that time we were growing tomatoes. And so I asked them, okay, so tomatoes, how would you guys handle disease problems and stuff like that? So oh, we just uh, take them out of service and let them freeze freeze the insects and diseases out and then just start it back up. That's when I said, oh my gosh, I think I would like to move here. <laughs> I felt that way when I was in Iceland too. I was like, I could live here easily. This is a very progressive, <laughs> interesting place. But yeah, they're doing really interesting stuff with their geothermal. And I thought that was super interesting too. So it's a little bit different than, than our geothermal, but uh, nevertheless, it's science. You know, just figure out how the things work, what the elements, you know, what is the steam made up of? J just got to figure it out. It's, it's science, yeah. Right. I guess here there's a problem with the lack of funding for geothermal exploration to learn more about what we have. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, there's, there's a lack of funding, that's for sure, because the HGGRC is left on their own to get the funding that they need. And it is so important. Our legislation should get money and do the exploration now because we're way behind. Uh, talking to Dr. Lauzi, she estimates that if we could figure out a way to get $100 million, maybe some from national funding, some from our legislature, whatever it takes, we could drill and do some exploration on each one of the islands. Imagine if each island had its own source of stable power. It doesn't have to be 100%, just a certain portion of its stable power. And then you would have to run a cable, you wouldn't have to do any of that things and make each island independent. Now, that is probably what we would really like 
right, to, to you know, put us in the safest position we could possibly be. What would that look like if every island had its own power, just in a, a huge way? Tell me, how would our lives change? First of all, the cost of electricity would go way down. The cost of electricity has to do with the energy that it takes to make that electricity. So if the energy is oil or coal or things like that, then the price will, will keep on going up as it starts to deplete. On the other hand, geothermal is not going to change at all because the steam is free. The steel, you know, that goes in the pipe and, and the turbine, stuff like that, you have to change periodically, but that's minor compared to the fact that the steam is free. So what would happen over a period of time, generations from now, we would have a competitive advantage to the rest of the world. That That's what's at stake. So, and we need to do it now because only 16 years from the time HGGRC was done, that's like a blip, you know, in geological time. But we know what's happening now we see our politics the world situation and how scary it is but we ourselves worrying about ourselves we could make a major change yeah wouldn't that be something if this was a place that was competitive and we were doing all kinds of things here and, and getting ahead instead of always scratching by and trying to catch up yeah you know when i was up in iceland i, I was shocked to hear that they were sending a bauxite from australia all the way up to iceland because oh. energy was so cheap they could convert it into aluminum and then they send the aluminum down to the world market isn't that oh, interesting isn't that something <laughs> Oh, that is something. Yeah. Yeah. What else would you like to say about geothermal? Leave us with some parting thoughts. You know, I think geothermal is a gift from Pele. That's essentially what I think. And uh, the more we look at it and the, the more we start to think about what we can do for future generation, it becomes more and more clear. Yeah, that's great. Geothermal is pretty straightforward, you know. I feel okay because the more we, we can talk a lot about it, but we can make it more complex than it needs to be because it's a very simple subject. When I talk about the fact that the steam is free, I can describe why why the steam is free, but it's because there's water and then there there's heat, but the steam is still free. Richard also recently spoke about Hawaii's geothermal with Nicole Lautzi, director of the Hawaii Groundwater and Geothermal Resources Center at UH Manoa on the YouTube channel Think Tech Hawaii. You can find the link below in the description if you'd like to hear more about that subject. And we will be back next week with another episode of What Would Our Kupuna Do? So please subscribe to this channel. And if you'll like this episode, that will help too. Thank you so much, Richard. See you next week. Ahoy ho. Okay.